Hello and welcome to the third video in our series where we plan where we're going to aim to prove the existence of Euler's number. In this video we're going to be looking at convergence of series. Now a series is basically just a, a large sum of many many terms and what we're concerned with is infinite series that is series that aren't finite and series that go on forever. So for example example of an infinite series I'm just going to write in red is this one over here which you might be familiar with before uh, 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth and you just keep adding these numbers together and in fact this series over here converges to, to 2 okay now um, we're going to again we're going to formally define what a series converging actually means now a series can also be written like a sequence. Um, there's a way of writing it as a sequence. So what we do is we can take the first term of our series, so one, and one is an approximation uh, in itself of the sum of the entire series. Obviously, it's not a very good approximation because in this case it's definitely less than what this entire series equals, if you will. Now if we take two terms and add them both together, we get 1.5. So we have 1, we had 1 for our first approximation, and then we have 1.5 for our second approximation. And we can take three terms and add them together, and we get an even better approximation of our series. So in this case, the third term is just 0.25 plus 1.5, so 1.75, right? And we can keep doing this, and we notice that we do get a sequence. So what it means for a series to converge is that the series, the sequence of partial sums of the series, so in this case, adding the adding only the first term, adding the sec two term, the first two terms of the series, adding the first three terms of the series, if these numbers get closer and closer and closer to some number, then we say the series converges. So more formally, a series Sn, which is given by this, the sum from i equals 1 to n of individual terms, Si, is set to converge to a real number, big L, if the partial sums of our series, so basically, i.e. the sequence, big S of i equals S1, S2, so that, that, just, that just means take one term, take two terms at a time, take three terms at a time, etc., if this sequence converges to L, then our entire series converges to L. Now, we learned already what the definition of a sequence converging means. And so the definition of a series converging is no different. It's just that we take the sequence of partial sums of our series. So formally, this means that we can make our series as close as we like to L by adding up a sufficient number of terms. Or even more formally, uh, this, you know, uh, statement with a lot of jargon. So it just reads, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a big N in the naturals such that if little n is greater than big N, then all the partial sums after the big nth partial sum, the distance between all partial sums after the big nth partial sum and L can be made less uh, than epsilon. Okay? So that's what the convergence of a series actually means. And this is very important when we prove uh, the existence of E. So remember, in school, uh, we learned that E can be defined as the limit as n approaches infinity of this stuff. So we can actually regard this as a sequence, as a sequence. But what's interesting is, let's take, let's regard it as a sequence. So let's say Sn is 1 plus 1, 1 over n to the power n. So the terms of the se this the sequence has terms, obviously. The first term is equal to 1 plus 1 over 1 to the power 1. The second term is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 to the power 2, and etc. And we want to see if the sequence converges. Now it turns out that it's a bit difficult to sort of, you know, verify the convergence of the sequence keeping it in this form. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand this sequence using the binomial theorem, which hopefully you know. Um, so recall that x plus y to the power n um, can be written 
as the sum of n choose k, x to the k, y to the n minus k, from k equals 0 to n. So this is just the binomial theorem. And you notice, you notice immediately that 1 plus 1 over n is also in this binomial form. It has two terms and it's raised to a natural power. It's, it's raised to a, a, a natural number power. Uh, remember, when we consider the convergence of sequences, we're only interested in natural numbers. We only want to find a natural number um, such that if we if we take all uh, terms of the sequence after the big nth nat natural number, um, the distance between these terms and our limit can be made as small as we like. So we're only concerned with natural numbers. So we can expand s of n using the binomial theorem. So just applying the formula directly, we get this is equal to k equals 0 to n of n choose k. Uh, well, that's just 1 to the power n minus k, uh, 1 over n to the power k. And, well, 1 to the power anything is just 1 at all times. So we can, in fact, we can just rub that out and take absolutely no notice of it. So the sequence looks a lot nicer like this. I mean, the series, sorry, looks a lot nicer like this. It's just 1 over n uh, to the power k. So if we write that out, it looks pretty pretty neat. It's just n choose 0, 1 over n to the power 0, plus n choose 1, 1 over n to the power 1, etc., etc. And uh, obviously we, we're interested in the limit as n approaches infinity of this series. So before we go any further, we're going to establish something which will be quite crucial in our proof. So just looking at the bottom of the page where I've, uh, I've sectioned off now with this red line, we see that n choose k is actually equal to n multiplied by n minus 1 all the way to n minus brackets k minus 1 close brackets divided by k factorial. Now, um, this shouldn't be too difficult to see, and um, if you would like to uh, prove it, then that can be done also as an exercise. Um, so this is, in fact, true. And if we multiply both sides of this equality by 1 over n to the power k, then we get this, is n times n times n, or k times, k times, okay? Now, immediately we see something quite interesting. We see that the numerator is n times n minus 1, all the way to n minus k minus 1, and in the, in the de denominator of the product of these two fractions, we have k factorial and n to the power k. Now, it's very easy to see now that this is indeed less than or equal to 1 over k factorial. Why is this? Well, it's quite simple. It's because in the numerator here, we have something that's definitely less than or equal to n to the power k. And in the denominator here, we have n to the power k. And also, we're multiplying all of that by 1 divided by k factorial. So the stuff on the left-hand side is 1 over k factorial scaled down by n times n minus 1 all the way to n minus k minus 1 divided by n times n times n k times n to the power k. So it should be very easy to see that the left side here is definitely less than or equal to 1 over k factorial. This result will also be very critical uh, in our proof. So let me just open a new page. So we've seen that n choose k times 1 over n to the power k is less than or equal to 1 over k factorial. Now, remember, earlier we, sh we showed that 1 plus 1 over n to the power n is equal to the sum of n choose k 1 over n to the power k from k equals 0 to n. And if this is true, if this top inequality is true, then the sum from k equals 0 to n 
of n choose k. I apologize, my n's do look like k's. n choose k is less than or equal to the sum from k equals 0 to n of 1 over k factorial. Now this is actually really interesting because we found some small, some early bounds of 1 plus 1 over n to the power n. We, it's, it's definitely bounded above by some series. Now, if we can somehow show that this series over here is also bounded above by some number, then we show that 1 plus 1 over n to the power n is bounded above by some number. Now, if we show that, and we also show that 1 plus 1 over n to the power n is a monotonic increasing sequence, then we prove by the monotone convergence theorem that the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the power n indeed exists. So this is our inspiration. We want to show that this summation over here is bounded above. Now I think I'm going to uh, begin doing that in the next video as we are running out of time. Thank you for watching.